Lawrence was like, that's it, case closed. I had a feeling in my gut. Of course you did. So wait for this. It turns out that the first wife was actually having an affair with the second wife. And the first wife took the rap to protect her. So with the two of them safely brought to justice, the ex-husband's prized aubergines were free to flourish and grow in peace. And Carsley swept the board at the allotment of the year. And this was all thanks to Agatha. Nice work, detective. <laughs> it's funny, you used to say that you felt like an outsider in Carsley. And you couldn't be more at the center of it. Yes. I suppose I am. Which makes me feel a bit better about the fact that my publisher wants to extend the book tour to the west coast of America. <gasps> it did add at least another six months to the tour. I'd be away almost a year. Oh, this is great news. That the tour is going so well. Not that you might be away for six months to a year. That's that's bad, bad news, obviously. Hello? Sheila? Sorry for the lack of notice, but I knew that my brother, the famous author, was back briefly, so I thought I'd pop in. Exactly how long were you intending to pop in for? Not much of a welcome home for the conquering hero. Agatha, even you could have blown up a couple of balloons. It's not six. I have been rather busy, I will have, you know, and I've had a lot of cases on. Oh, uh, still playing detective. Mm. Mm. How quaint. James, mm. could you bring my bag up to my room, please? And uh, I'll have a cup of tea when you're ready. Made by you, because, no offence, Agatha makes the most ghastly tea. Sheila. Me, 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 me. Good. <laughs> Who's Melissa? She's uh, just a writer friend. Met on the tour. Sweet old thing. <laughs> I'll, um... Take this in the bedroom. No, no, I didn't say anything. I was going to, but my sister showed up. Oh, come on, speak up. I can hear it, I'm thinking. Oh, hello. I, uh, just came to check on this doorknob, which I worried might be a little loose. Appears it's fine, which is a relief. I can relax about the loose knob. Is it or is it not legal to herd your cow up a road? Legal, but only between the hours of 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. with permission of the Commissioner of Police Metropolitan Streets Act, 1867. Correct. Yes. Oh, well, I feel safer knowing my favourite sergeant knows when to stop out of hours cow herding. Well, I'm not your favourite sergeant yet. I've got to pass this exam first. Are you nervous? Uh, only extremely. Basically, no one's committing any crime, so I've had too much time to think about it. Oh, come on, Carsley, pull your finger out. Start breaking the law so the girl doesn't have time to worry about his exam. Right. What does section 32 of the Salmon Act 1986 refer to? Ah. It is illegal to handle a salmon suspiciously. Have you ever handled a salmon suspiciously, Bill? That law is actually referring to poachers. Oh, sure it is. They're not for you. Charles, just, just put them on the table. The table. Not that table, that table. That one. <laughs> Sorry. You OK? What? You're usually so relaxed on these occasions. I'm, I'm fine. I'm absolutely fine. I'm just... Just... <clears throat> just worried about the singer being any good. La-di-da-di-di. La-di-di. Lady-di. Whatever oh, she's called. Me too. You know, I... I should introduce myself, but... I've been going through a dry spell with the ladies. Charles, you, you don't have to seduce her. You just have to introduce her at the concert. Oh, God, what's happened to us? We're bags of nerves. Come on. 
That's it, breathe. Yes, please. Stop, driver! Go, driver! A new driver! Time to finish my shift, better go. Let me go! Oh, you don't see me! Mayor Huxley, Your Honor. Please. I want the Huxley administration to have a, a chilled out, man of the people kind of vibe, you know? Call me Mayor Ted. So, is this uh, your lovely wife? Oh, no, 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 uh, Mayor Ted. Uh, I'm actually with that man. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. Looks like Carson is a groovy place to live these days. <laughs> Melissa, what the <laughs> bloody hell are you doing here? What? Wait, you can't kiss me like that. Oh, I'm so sorry, sweetest. It's the French in me. We're just so physical. Uh, I told you not to come. Oh, is that Agatha? Oh, she's not bad looking for age. Have you told her? I need you to go. Jamesy promised Melissa he would tell Agatha. Bad Jamesy. Mayor Huxley, <laughs> it is great to see you attain high office. You had my vote, or you would have had my vote if I'd have had a vote. Sadly, I was not elected to the parish council. Still, you know what they say, politics is show business for ugly people. Not that you're ugly. You're quite attractive, actually. Thanks. <laughs> Charles Frank. Hi. Hi. Hello, Lady Day. Hello. <laughs> Where's Lord Day? You know I'm not a real lady, right? It's a stage name. Yes. yes, yes, I know. I was joking. Uh. What's happening to me? You know you can uh, ask me anything. All right, junior detective Tony. How many famous murders have you put behind bars? You know, it's not all about solving murders. You know, mostly you're investigating more minor matters. You know, missing persons, tracking down debtors, Looking for signs your husband's having an affair. Oh, this'll be fun. What are the signs? How do I know if my husband's having an affair? Karen, the concert's about to start. We haven't got time to muck about. Oh, ignore him. Forewarned is forearmed. Well, sudden changes in mood, uh, avoiding sex, unexplained phone calls, etc. Look at your fingers, you <laughs> Agatha, hi. Uh, this is uh, Melissa, my writer friend. I went to a reading at his book tour. Uh -huh. We spent the night together. Evening, not night. Had a couple of drinks and then went to bed. Went home, said goodbye. Whatever. Um, Jamesy has something he needs to tell you. Well, I'm sure that Jamesy will tell me whatever he has to tell me at home, in private. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have work to do. Are you crazy? Why are you acting like this? Why didn't you tell her? I'm going to tell her now. Do that, <gasps> and I'll make sure you regret it. Now get out! <laughs> Agatha. Sorry, uh, Melissa can be a bit excitable. Oh, I'm sure she can. You're getting this all wrong. I'm sure I am, yes. What about you? You and Charles were all over each other. What did he say? I didn't catch it. Really? I am not shagging Charles Freyth. I heard that all right. I do apologize. Oh, don't, please. It's fascinating. I've had my suspicions about you two for yonks. Excuse me. James! Please don't go. Let me talk to Agatha. Hands off me, Freyth. And stay away from Agatha. James? What have you done to upset James? What have I done? Does it not occur to you that your precious brother might have done something to upset me? And who are you? I live here. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Smooth Jazz Night. I'm going to kick off with a song that I've written. Some of you may know it. 
Here we go. I don't know about you, but just lately I've been thinking that the way we praise the brave is quite bizarre. are the strongest thing <laughs> by far. happened at all of our charity concerts because if it did he's definitely coming to the next one <laughs> and he gave me a great big donation you all right uh, yes yes i'm, I'm fine sorry excuse me okay. bill agatha i need to you're not on your own are you uh no why i don't want you to worry or panic I'm really sorry to have to tell you this, but neighbours reported hearing a fight at your cottage, and when I got here, I found a body. <gasps> oh, God. Oh, please tell me it's not James. No, no, no. No, it's not him. It's... It's... It's the body of a woman. What? The body belongs to a woman called Melissa Shepherd. Do you know her? Ah, uh, yes, I, I. I met her earlier. She was a friend of James's. Right. Well, your house is a crime scene. Can Agatha stay with you tonight? Yes, of course. A, a hashtag me too. I'm not going home until James has been found. Lady Day, thank you so much. Delicious singing, and I do hope someone being brutally murdered hasn't ruined your evening. Inspector, I think we need to review the evidence. Agatha Raisins having an affair with Sir Charles Wraith. She also argued with James Lacey and the murdered woman. And she didn't take her seat for the concert. She had opportunity and motive to, to use the technical terms. <laughs> I'm a big fan of TV detective shows, yeah. I always guess the murderer correctly. Mm, me too. <laughs> Mayor Ted, why don't we both write down on a piece of paper the name of the person we think committed the murder, put it in an envelope, and then when we catch the murderer, we can see which of us got it right? I just told you who I think it was. It's like the reason. Uh, right. Well, it's not going to work with this murder, is it? <gasps> why don't we try it with the next murder? Forensics found bloodstains at the cottage, separate to where Melissa's body was. The blood may be hers, but there's no sign of James. Oh, God, James. What on earth have you got yourself mixed up in? James 
his car. Oh no. Okay, we don't know if the blood in the car or the cottage is James's, so we need to keep calm. You keep calm if you want to. I'm worried as hell. But why would someone attack James at the cottage? Unless they came looking for Agatha and James because of the detective work and mistook Melissa for Agatha? Melissa was a beautiful young woman. That's impossible. How was James before he disappeared? Did anything seem out of character? Well, I don't know why. I've not seen him for the last two and a half months. Quite frankly, I don't know how he was behaving. Sarah, you'd met Melissa before? Yes, briefly. She was a yoga teacher. Mm -mm. Jim said she was a writer. Maybe she was both. Well, all I know is when she moved here and joined the Ladies' Society, she acted rather grand. Grand how? Oh, you know the type. They talk big about what they're making for the cake sale and then pass shop-bought stuff off as their own. You've taken the mickey. Uh, sorry, that's what you did, wasn't it? I, I forgot. <sighs> I should have known back then you were the wrong woman for James. Oh. Anyway, Melissa was married to Luke Shepherd, who has a menswear shop in Malmesbury. They divorced and he moved to Swyford. I always thought she was rather bored, looking for excitement. Oh. And she found that with James. <laughs> well, maybe Sarah and I should go and see this Luke Shepherd tomorrow. I don't believe James was having an affair. No, neither do I. Although no, one really. couldn't blame him if he was. Oh, what are you muttering about? The question is, where is James? Where was he heading when he crashed his car? Well, it was on the Evesham Road, near the turning to Norton under Witchwood. Agatha! Oh, what? Look, if you have nothing helpful to see, can you please just zip it? Our old nanny Maud lives in Norton under Witchwood. That must have been why James was going there. Helpful enough for you? I simply don't understand why James would go on the run rather than turn to us for help. Well, I have no idea. To be honest, these last few months we've been leading very separate lives. Listen, Sheila, I know that we're both very different and we don't really get along, but we both love James and we want to make sure that he's okay, so why don't you and I just, you know, work together on this instead of against each other? A truce? Yes. But once we found him, we can go back to normal. Oh, good God, yes. Oh, thank God for that. Come on. Ah. Hello, young lady. Is your daddy home? <laughs> well, I don't think it's a laughing matter. We're from the Agatha Raisin Detective Agency. We're here to interview Luke Shepherd. I'm Luke's wife, Karen. Luke will be home soon. Why don't you come through to the garden and wait for him? Agatha Raisin. She's the one who murdered her partner, right? She had nothing to do with that. <laughs> don't blame me. Blame the Mercester Times. You can't run a headline like that. What happened to innocent until proven guilty? Do you want a cup of tea? Or a glass of wine? Oh, uh, it's a bit early for us. I'm surprised she's old enough to drink. She is, however, old enough to smoke pot. That is a bong. I know what a bong is, Charles. I wasn't always a vicar's wife. Mm. Nanny Maud spends most of her time in Scotland taking care of her mother. Well, let's try around the back. No, no, this way. I haven't been here for years. The truth is, because our parents worked abroad, James and I saw more of Nanny Moore than we did of them. No wonder you're both so screwed up. I thought we were having a truce. We are. All to have it stay hard. Won't happen again. Hello. All of us kids. She didn't have children of her own. Agatha? 
James, if it was him that was here, has been searching for a private doctor. So the blood must have been his. He must be hurt. I saw Melissa at the jazz night, but I've never spoken to her. So she was a yoga teacher and a writer? Luke told me she was a market gardener and a nut job. And her other ex-husband would say the same thing. Oh, we didn't know there was another ex-husband. Oh, yeah. He's a right weirdo. Owns that vintage toy shop in Mercester. John Dewey. He was obsessed with Melissa. Always threatening Luke after they got together. We should go. Thank you so much. Um, we'll speak to your husband another day. Come on, Charles. Why leave before we've spoken to Luke Shepard? Luke Shepard was at the jazz night when Melissa was killed, so he has an alibi. Mm. John Dewey threatened Luke with violence. He could have done the same to James if he thought that James and Melissa were having an affair. So we need to speak to John Dewey immediately. Come on, Charles. Good luck. Oh, Bill, just wait a sec. We found proof that James is still alive, found out where he's staying, but he's, he's gone. So obviously we need to find out where he's headed. So we need you to use your police resources to, you know, check out where he's... I'm sitting my sergeant's exam in half an hour, but I'll come straight back. I don't think you're quite understanding me. I just told you that James is still alive and he may be badly hurt. Oh. You know what, Bill? Just don't you worry about it. Yeah, it's fine. Just you obsess about your stupid exam. You know, you, you think you want to be a sergeant? Do you think you're really up to it? Hmm? I mean, what kind of man would want to spend his life surrounded by these weird creatures? This kind of man, lonely, single, prefers the company of dolls, to rude humans. Sorry, uh, Mr. Dewey. Oh, Mr. Dewey. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, we're private detectives. We'd like to ask you a few questions about... Melissa, my ex-wife, yes. <laughs> we knew that come calling soon, didn't we, Felicity? Yes. Ask me anything you want. Well, you were punching above your... You seem a, a, an unlikely couple. Melissa was out of my league. Is that what you're struggling to say, my... Aristocratic friend. He is. Poor Melissa. She had a troubled childhood. Got in with bad people. We got her into drugs. I offered her security after years of turmoil. Until she got bored and had an affair with Luke Shepard. And who could blame her? He's gorgeous. Did you threaten her or Luke Shepard? Me? Threaten Big Butch Luke? What chance would I stand, my dear? No. I was glad to get rid. I haven't seen or thought of Melissa for years now. Sorry. Ah, oh, I blew the exam, I'm sure of it. Yeah, Agatha doesn't think I'm up to being a sergeant, and now I'm going to prove her right. Agatha's just worried about James. She thinks you're amazing. Well done. There's a light on at Melissa's. I'm going to take a look. No, Bill. Bill. Don't take stupid risks just because of something Agatha said. Look. Call Wilkes for backup. I don't need Wilkes. say that the hammer I was attacked with was the same that killed Melissa, probably used to attack James. So it's all connected. <sighs> We're still no further forward to finding James. I 
I think I owe you an apology. Tony told me what happened. If it wasn't for me, you would never have gone to Melissa's cottage and you would never have been attacked. For what it's worth, I have always believed in you. I think you're going to pass that exam and make an excellent sergeant. Here we go. Now, Bill, I want you to take this opportunity to have a little bit of peace and time for yourself, OK? What's that? Oh, dear. Let's just move these away. No flowers or grapes, but I did bring vodka. I thought we could all drink it one night when you're better. Sounds like a plan. <sighs> I'm so glad you're OK. If anything had happened to you... Uh, something did happen to me. I got hit on the head with a hammer by a murderer. I heard a comrade officer had been wounded in action. Oh! Now, I know it's a risk we take protecting the community, but still, reporting for duty, sir, how can I help? Mrs Boggle, thank you, but right now it's enough knowing that you're out there patrolling the streets, being our eyes and ears. Mission accepted. Well, I'm not sure if we need to make it that formal. I won't let you down. Yes, well, thank you, Mrs B. Uh, but uh, if you'll excuse us, we're about to have a bit of a case conference. Mm -hmm. So, for my money, I think the villain has to be one of Melissa's shopkeeping ex-husbands, John Dewey, creepy purveyor of dolls, or hunky Luke Shepherd of L.J. Shepherd Gentleman's Outfitters, Sale ends Friday. 20% off all tailoring on presentation of this flyer. Thank you for that. Tony, could you go back to Nanny Maud's house, have a route around, see if there are any signs that James might have returned? Will do. Um, do we think drugs could be behind all this? I mean, didn't Dewey say Melissa had drug issues in her past? Well, she had them in her present as well. Melissa was a regular at the singles night at the Fox and Ferret. And she went there to buy drugs from a dealer who operates there. I'd be very surprised if anyone was selling drugs at the singles night. Well, you should know you're a regular there too, Sir Charles. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, Mrs B. It's in my dossier. Singles night at the Fox and Ferret. Observe Sir Charles Frace being rejected by multiple women whilst wearing a ridiculous fake moustache. <laughs> and my humiliation is complete. Well, perhaps we should all go to the singles night, see if we can find the man that sold Melissa the drugs. Now, I'll have to get a hall pass from Mr Boggle because he gets very jealous when men flock round me. Right, well, I'm coming too. I mean, I know I should let Wilkes handle the investigation. Oh, good God, no, no, no. Do you have anything else on me in that dossier? I couldn't possibly discuss official secrets with a civilian. Where are you off to? Singles night at the Fox and Ferret. Honestly! James is barely gone, hopefully not gone at all, and you're already trying to replace him. Will you just relax? I want James back just as much as you do. I am going to the singles night as part of the investigation. But currently, I am probably famously the most unsingle woman in the Cotswolds. No one's going to tell me anything. Actually, Sheila. How would Mr. Sheila feel about you being single, just for the evening? Oh, he couldn't care less. I've never bought drugs in my life, but if I had, it wouldn't occur to me to buy them here. There's a dark underside to the Cotswolds, Sheila. It's not all such cottages and cream teas. Now, we've got to blend in and not attract attention if we're going to find Melissa's dealer. That hemline needs to go up and in your ten. And I've already told you about that moustache. Oh! oh! Everyone knows it's you. Maybe that's where I've been going wrong. <laughs> This private detective thing is fun! <laughs> is the medallion too much? Way too much. It's perfect. Detective Constable Wong, what exactly are you doing at a singles night in the company of half the Agatha Raisin Detective Agency? What are you doing at a singles night, more to the point? I'm undercover. Mm. I heard there were drugs being sold here. I'm wearing a wire. Mm. Test it. <clears throat> testing, testing. Mm. 
are now entering the establishment at approximately 2046. Make that 2047. I do not want to give my feedback on a recent purchase of kitty litter, nor do I think I may be eligible for a payout from a PPI that I bought in 1998. <sighs> oh. Okay, so what part of I'm not interested do you not understand? Agatha. James? James, is that you? Where are you? I'm calling from a payphone, so the police don't trap my mobile and I've run out of coins. James, what have you got to fear from the police? What have you done? Please, please, will you just come back to me? No, no, no I want to. Of course I do, but I can't. I, I put you in danger and I'm not prepared to do that. I needed to know. I wasn't having an affair with Melissa. I know that. The police are convinced I'm responsible. And that means the killer is out there and no one's looking for them. Did you see who killed Melissa? No. After I was hit, all I remember was Melissa's voice. Uh, it sounded like she knew them. Agatha. That thing that Melissa said that I had to tell you. What? Uh, Agatha. Oh, Agatha. Oh, James. I Never been to a singles night before. Every night is singles night for me at the moment. My advice to you: find someone to settle down with. <clears throat> well, well, well. Look who's here. Now, I don't know much, but I know that you don't bring a doll to singles night. So, uh, how does this singles night thing work then? Well, the guys send the girls drinks and they hit on us. That's it, really. You seem like a bit of an expert. Oh, I'm a player. And don't you forget it, stud. That's on the gent over there. What did I tell you? Ooh, you, you madam? Yeah. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> I knew this would happen. Thank God Mr. Boggle's not here. He tear them limb from limb. Oh, Mrs. Bottles. <laughs> I didn't know that you were a singleton. I didn't know that you were. Oh, I am tonight. Ooh. <clears throat> not, not, not a word to the mayoress, of course. So, um, how about I buy you and, uh, and this lovely lady here a drink? Eh? Here undercover. We're in a warm. Like we're in CIS. <laughs> 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 so, who are we looking for? Drug dealers. Illegal purveyors of substances and hobbies. Uh, roger that. <laughs> oh, and um, keep them peeled. <laughs> <laughs> that guy sold Melissa drugs. He wasn't saying anything at first, but then he fell for my womanly charm. I'm just kidding. He hasn't sold Melissa drugs in weeks. She's getting them from her ex-husband. Would any of you lovely young people care to join our party? Sir Charles, the more the merrier, I say. Oh, um, I'm not sure we're really in a party mood, Mayor Ted. FYI, Constable, myself and my unofficial deputy here have completed our investigation and we can now declare that this is a drugs-free singles night. Oh. Great. Brilliant. Excuse me. I'm going to see her. Oh, Dewey manages to avoid questioning because of an incompetent inspector and a swinging mayor. Tony and I could go and see him today. Great idea. I will tell Charles and Sarah to find an excuse to go and see Luke Shepherd at work. I wanted to show you this. It's CCTV footage. James, you're alive. Wait, how did you access this? Use my police account. Yeah, but why won't you've logged on when you're on sick leave? I mean, what about your promotion? 
James is my friend. You okay, Agatha? I actually talked to James last night. You spoke to him? He rang, but he got cut off before he could tell me where he was. Oh, it's okay. We'll find him. We'll start at that lay-by. Ash Jewish place. He lives above the shop. Mrs. Bogle, what are you doing here? Protecting the community 24-7, mainly from teenagers. I hate teenagers, don't you? Look at them, strutting round like they own the place. And look what they want. It's outrageous. Any fool knows the two Gs in Bogle? Lovely to meet you, Sir Charles. And let me say, what a pleasure it is to make a suit for a man with such a trim and youthful figure. Well, one likes to keep in shape. My wife says that you've been round asking questions about Melissa. What is Sorry, I couldn't help myself. I've been staring at that since you came in. Let me tell you what I told Inspector Wilkes. On the night... Of Melissa's murder, I was at the concert, and uh, when that poor young policeman was attacked, I was at a hotel with Karen for her 30th birthday. 30th? Yes, that's right. Ah, let's join us for tea. Oh, do we have to? Those dolls creep me out. You told Sir Charles Fraith that you hadn't seen Melissa in years, but our inquiries suggest otherwise. Uh. Melissa came round wanting money a few weeks ago. Told her I couldn't help. I was worried she'd only spend it on drugs like she did when we were together. So she had drug issues during your marriage? I'm old-fashioned about drugs. I hate them because of what they did to Melissa. Right. All measured up. Shall we say, give me the £300 deposit now, and the other 1200 when the suit's ready? 1500 Bargain. OK, yes, well done. Clever little snoops, aren't they, ladies? Yes. I did see Melissa, yes. She was seeing a psychiatrist in Mercester, and she popped round afterwards. She was lonely. And you won't be surprised to learn, so was I. Was someone selling her drugs, Mr. Dewey? Well, I wouldn't know. I have nothing to do with drugs. They scare me. What's this about? I'm pretty sure taking a toy doll to a singles night is a good way to stay single. What, well, I... Well, I'm sure you're right, yes. The thing is, uh, I don't have a wingman, so I make do with a, a winged doll. Officer Boggle checking in. Is this is okay, or do you want me to call Inspector Wilkes for backup? Yes! Yes! He recognised James. He said that he asked him for a lift, but the driver refused to take him because he thought he looked, his words, a little dubious. He said he wanted to go to Scotland. Scotland? I mean, obviously. We can't go to Scotland right now. Your wife not feeding you, mate? If you knew anything about my wife's cooking, you'd understand. I've got a cup of tea, please. Sure. So, Dewey is our prime suspect. Agreed. As far as I can tell, the only thing Luke Shepard is guilty of is overcharging me for a suit. But didn't you say Luke had a bong in his house? Uh, that could belong to the wife, Karen. True. And what about checking out this psychiatrist that Dewey said Melissa was seeing? Good idea. I was also wondering if there are any clues at Melissa's house. Probably. Whoever Bill disturbed must have been there for a reason. I could always, um... 
try and break in. Check out her laptops, etc. Neighbourhood watch take a very dim view of breaking and entering, even by landed gentry, Sir Charles. You could always use the spare key Melissa Shepherd hid under the yellow flower pot to the left of the front door. It's in the, in the dossier. Of course it is. Dossier. Well, she wasn't lying about being a writer. Three novels, but Rehab, The Walrus, oh. <laughs> Fifty Shades of James. Don't need to read that one. I think we absolutely do have to read that one. Well, thank you for your help. That was the last private doctor in James's search results, and he hasn't made an appointment there either. So then what was he doing Googling doctors? Why face all this on his own rather than ask us for support? Bloody men! I wonder who she is. Really connected to Melissa in some way. I dare say she'd tell you, Charles. I mean, what lady can resist your legendary Charles? Very funny. Hello. I'd like to make an appointment to see Dr. Henderson, please. Charles Freight. <laughs> Charles. Hello there. Welcome to the area. Um, I'm not living here. The house belonged to my sister. I'm just collecting family heirlooms. I was terribly sorry to hear of your sad loss. But I'm sure your sister would want you to have them. Well, she definitely wouldn't, but I'm having them anyway. You know, I didn't know your sister very well, but you seem very different. Why is that, I wonder? It's a long story. I would very much like to hear it. Would you like to come in? Still got it, Charlie boy? We weren't close. Hadn't seen each other in years. Melissa was a novelist. A novelist, a yoga teacher, an astronaut, was secretly going out with Prince William. <coughs> Melissa claimed them all. The truth, she was a narcissist and a drug addict, in and out of rehab in her early 20s. Even so, she was our father's favourite. He disinherited me and left everything to her. What did you do to deserve that? I'll tell you another time. Melissa was pretty and popular. I was always in her shadow. I can't imagine why. Especially, if I may say, in those heels. <laughs> You're very charming, Sir Charles. It has been said, although not recently. I know a very nice pub nearby. I wonder if I could buy you a drink this afternoon. The plain sister, jealous of the younger, more beautiful sister. A story as old as time. Add her to the rogues gallery. Julia is not plain. I think she's rather beautiful. We're going for a drink. Oh. Charles has fallen in love with a new suspect. Hello. Only because she's the only woman in a very long time that's not oh, giving him the bum's rush. Very helpful. Yes. Anyway, we need to get back to Melissa's house. 
find that rehab novel. Oh, I'm on it. Good, good. That was a receptionist from one of the private doctors we called earlier, a Dr Henderson. A person answering James's description has just made an appointment for an hour's time. <gasps> Stay hidden till he comes out. If James is hurt, he really needs to see that doctor. I'll keep my emotions in check. Good. Oh my God! James! Sheila! James, don't run! Please, just come home! I can't. Not yet. Agatha. He thinks we've called the police. Oh, well done, Sheila. Brilliant. Thought you boarding school types were meant to repress all your feelings. Agatha, whatever's wrong with James, it's psychological, not physical. Okay, Charles. Here we go. Hi. How are you doing? So nice to see you again. Sorry. Hot date. <laughs> Charles. Is this? I fear this date may not be as hot as you've imagined. This is why my father disinherited me. He did it the day I took my vows. I have a polo mallet, and I'm not afraid to use it. Lacey. Charles. <sighs> Melissa? What was your relationship with her? I barely knew the woman. She was just... Someone to confide in. About what? I need you to help me find out exactly who Melissa Shepherd was. Why she dragged me into her chaos. I can't go home. And you can't tell Agatha. We've been endangering her. But you're happy to endanger me. Thanks, buddy. been uh, preparing for the charity auction. Oh. So how was your date with Julia? Melissa's sister? Melissa's sister is a sister. She's a nun. <laughs> yes. Yes. Have a laugh, why don't you? So, any news on James? Uh, no, but I'm going to go and see Dr. Henderson again on my own. Actually, could I go and see him? Because of patient confidentiality, it might be easier to get something out of him if I pose as a man in need of psychiatric help. You are a man in need of psychiatric help, especially now you're dating a nun. Please, go and see Dr. Henderson as quick as you can. Go on, quick, quick, quick. I went to get Melissa's rehab novel. I've only read a few pages, but it's basically about someone called Melissa who goes to rehab. Brilliant. Total lack of imagination from Melissa. But this is good, because that means it's about real people and actual events that happened to the real people, i.e. clues. So continue reading. This is odd. 
I've just got an email from a solicitor at Mercester inviting me to the viewing of Melissa Shepherd's living will. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my will. Speaking of the shoe fetishist, who does a nun get money for a Christian Louboutins? I want to make amends. I'm sorry to my sister, Sister Julia. Do you see what I did there? <laughs> that I inherited everything and you've got nothing. And sorry to James Lacey and Agatha Raisin if I broke up your relationship. I also want to pay tribute to the two men I married. John, thanks for being so weird and boring me to death. <laughs> well, to be fair to Melissa, I am a bit weird and boring. <laughs> and Luke, thanks for knocking me about. She's lying. I never hit a woman. <laughs> and I never will. Well, that's not what Melissa told me. <clears throat> I'm leaving my house and everything I own to... even if I wanted to. Dr. Henderson, I know you can't tell us much. Melissa was a patient of yours. Well, actually, she was never a patient of mine, so I can tell you everything. And she came to see me a couple of weeks before she was murdered, said it was research for two characters she was writing a book about. Ah, was it Rehab or The Walrus or Fifty Shades of James? What on earth is Fifty Shades of James? You really don't want to know. I am the walrus. Well, we all love the Beatles, Dr. Anderson, but perhaps uh, if we could stick... No, no, no. It's my nickname. Because of my moustache and because I'm called Russell. She wrote a book about me. Possibly. Could you tell us more about these two characters? Uh, one was a diagnosed sociopath and one was a uh, borderline personality disorder sufferer. No one's ever written a book about me before. Uh, how did I come across? I haven't read it. Is there any chance of getting me a copy? I wish I'd never mentioned it. These two characters? Um, she wanted to know what a very close friendship between a BPD sufferer and a sociopath would be like, whether they really should have a friendship at all. I'm just going to phone my wife, let her know if someone's written a book about it. Well, me. why shouldn't they be friends? I mean, after all, they're, they're both crazy. Uh, actually, that's completely wrong. Uh, they're very different mental disorders. Uh, BPD sufferers have disturbed patterns of perception and uh, unstable sense of self. They invest heavily in intense and obsessive relationships with other people. Sounds like Melissa. Whereas sociopaths have a grandiose sense of self, shallow emotions, and are easily able to discard relationships without regret or remorse. I warn Melissa that in real life her BPD character should stay well clear of her sociopath character. In extreme cases, they'd happily harm or kill anyone in their way. So if Melissa based the BPD sufferer on herself, who was the homicidal sociopath based on? Marjorie, you're not going to believe this. I'm going to be famous. Hi, uh, listen, uh, I'm no tittle-tattle, apart from maybe when I'm being suspected of murder. Um, it's just that uh, Julia said she hadn't seen her sister for years, and uh, well, according to Melissa, her sister had been in contact a few weeks ago and they met. And uh, well, she said uh, she said she was thinking of leaving the order and that she needed to borrow a lot of money. I just okay, good. Mm. Well, if Julia was thinking of leaving the order, she could inherit Melissa's estate. And if she was in debt, that would give her a big, fat motive. Is this really necessary? It is if you don't want to get arrested. Charles! Agatha! <laughs> Just brought a few donations for the charity auction. Oh. What with everything that's going on, it rather slipped my mind. <laughs> I'm surprised you remember, to be honest. Are you sure you want to give away all these? Oh, come on. What better way to tempt your platonic girlfriend to come to a charity auction than with these little beauties? <sighs> In the same way that this will tempt Dewey. 
I think we could extract a little more information out of them at the auction. What do you think? Brilliant. Shall we take all this inside the house? Yeah. yeah. Yes? Well, how about a cup of tea, seeing as I've come all this way? Yeah, tea. Tea, that would be good. Oh, Charles, you've left your boot open. Oh, do you know what, Agatha? I don't really want a cup of tea. I, I, a gin and tonic would be nice. Oh, even better. I think I need a drink. Right. Dewey couldn't stay away. I still remember nothing about the night Melissa was murdered. Are you sure you don't just want to tell Agatha you're here? There's nothing I want more. The chances are the murderer is going to be at the auction. It's better if I stay away and keep watch from a distance. Inspector Wilkes! <laughs> so, um, who's your number one suspect now on the murder of Melissa Shepard? Well, my fellow armchair detective, if we're going to be honest, uh, your guess is as good as mine. Um, uh, well, my guess is probably not as good as yours. I mean, seeing as how you're the actual detective investigating the actual case. You make a good point. Mm. I brought these for my daughter from Mr. Dewey. Um, surprise for her birthday. This yes. is uh, nice. Uh, but she's here, and I don't want her to see them. Well, why don't I take them with me now, and then I can drop them to you later. I'll bring my Kojak DVDs. Who loves you, baby? Do you want a lollipop? <laughs> <laughs> uh, lot number 14, a uh, lovely porcelain doll. Who would like to give an opening bid? Fiver! Uh, peasants and Philistines. Uh, 200. Uh, 250. What did you do that for? You don't want that weird doll. I'm just winding up, Dewey. That's not funny. This is for charity, not your pathetic grudges. Oh. 350. 350 four. and 400. Did Melissa ever speak about having a special friend in rehab? Oh, discovered the shoes, Anyone I see. Else? I'll be bidding on all of these. <laughs> It's quite a collection. You're the Cotswolds of Melda Marcos. Oh. Or isn't that you? I pray every day that Lord will forgive my little hobby. <laughs> quite an expensive little hobby, though, isn't it? If I may ask you, I mean, how do you afford it? I mean, I suppose once you leave the order and inherit your sister's money, your money problems be a thing of the past. I'm not leaving the order. I haven't got money problems. Oh, well, that's uh, not what Dewey said. He said that you'd have been in touch with your sister, told her that you were leaving your life as a nun and that you needed money. My sister was a liar, as we know. The truth is, Melissa came to me saying that she needed money. She got herself involved with drugs again. She wasn't making any sense. She, she kept raving on about the dolls. 550 in cash. 600. Cash. 600 I have. Oh, kind. <laughs> we met at the uh, jazz night. 650. Yeah, detective. Six mm. I remember. Still rocking the pigtails. I love it. Any more, anyone? Probably should have grown out of them by now. 700. 750. 750. 900. 900 pounds. 1,000. 1,000 pounds. Do you want to hang out sometime? Sure, yeah, I'd be lucky. 1,050. 1,100. <sighs> Mr. Shepherd, sold to Mr. Dewey 1,100 pounds. A nun's life isn't easy. I, I question my calling every day, especially in now. But honestly, I, I have no plans to leave. But if I ever change my mind, maybe I'll give you a call.
I believe everything Julia has said. Yeah, of course you do. Love is blind. business coming through. Leave it to the professionals. Stay calm. Oh, no. No. Wilkes says Julia was strangled. He's asking people if anyone saw anyone suspicious hanging around in the garden while the auction was on. Oh, God. Where's James? He was in his room. What? But he's not there anymore. In his room? Charles Freyth, are you telling me that you have been hiding him here this entire time? Oh, you were... You snake! I'll go and take a look around. So who would want Julia killed? And are the two sisters' murders connected? Well, Dewey and Luke both have reason to kill Melissa, but Julia as well? I think she needed the money from the estate to fund her shoe habit. Julia promised me she had no plans to leave the order. I don't think she would have lied to me. Who would have wanted to prevent Julia from inheriting? Not Luke or Dewey. In fact, there's nothing to connect them to Julia unless one of them was the killer and Julia found out. Meanwhile... Wilkes still thinks that James is the killer. He can't be. Why would James want to kill Julia? I didn't kill Julia. James! James! Oh, God. Listen, move. You can't stay here. This is a crime scene. The police are everywhere. Get down. Just... What if we smuggle him out and hide him at the detective agency? Great idea. How are we going to do that? How fortuitous that you turned up just as I was having a clear out, Bill. Thanks for helping me get rid of this carpet. No problem, Sir Charles. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop right there, you two. Now, I couldn't help but overhear, Sir Charles, that you suddenly want to get rid of this carpet. Well, it just so happens that I need a new carpet for my front room at home. So, put it down, roll it out, and let's take a look, shall we? There goes my promotion. There goes my whole career. Whoa. Oh, God, no, no. Oh, look at that dust. Oh, that's going to wreak havoc with my allergies. And that colour, that colour's never going to go with my liver at city, is it? Oh, come on. No, take it to the dump. Uh, you okay? Yeah, really, just a little strain. A strain. Waste of time. I'm gonna have to find it. Oh. Oh. You know what? For someone who hasn't eaten very much recently, really bloody heavy. Melissa's truly terrible novel. There's a character called Jimmy in it who she meets in rehab. They fall in love and they have this passionate and slightly obsessive affair. Maybe Jimmy is a sociopathic character that Dr. Henderson was talking about when we went to see him. We? You, you took James with you? Charles! So did your Melissa ever mention this Jimmy character? She was not my Melissa. Maybe Jimmy is you, James. I doubt it. As I've never been a drug addict or in rehab. The way things are going, I wouldn't rule it out in the future. L.J. Shepherd, gentlemen's outfitters. Maybe the J stands for Jimmy. I'll go to Luke's house and talk to him. Well, Charles, don't go on your own. At least take Sarah with you. Or Jimmy is John Dewey. I can talk to him, but I need someone to protect me against some scary dolls. Yep. 
Cheers for offering bell. Come on, let's get you into the hiding place. This is the calm zone. This is where we go when we want to relax and just calm down. Feeling very calm in the calm zone. You okay? I know you were rather fond of Julia. She was the first person I've connected to in a long time. You know, you and James are lucky to have each other. I think he's holding something back. Talk to him, Agatha. Life's too short to leave things unsaid. That was almost profound. I know. I rather impressed myself, actually. Sir, I'll be back with the official investigation soon. You'll be the enemy. Well, it's been great working with you, sir. Oh. Almost, Sergeant. Shoot, sure, teenagers. Would you stop smoking and drinking beer in a public place and revise for your exams? I'm sorry about that, Officer. The Millennium Menace is everywhere. Now, I still have a long list of antisocial adolescents in my dozier. If you would like to pass the names on to the authorities. That's brilliant, Officer Boggle. Maybe not right now. We're just on a case. Say no more. I stand ready to assist, as always. Shoot. Sure. Shoot! Don't drink in public places. Revise! Tony, you're a grown-up detective. No You'll not be freaked out by creepy dolls. <sighs> so that's what the aubergine means, huh? So, I have an idea how we can play this. We should lull Luke into a false sense of security. Uh... Come to collect your suit, Sir Charles? <laughs> because this is my home, not my shop. May I ask what it is you're doing here? Yes. We came to tell you that Mr Dewey is about to be arrested for the murder of Melissa and Julia. Uh, a policeman is with him right now. What she said. to investigate we're here because um my boyfriend wants to buy me that um lovely doll he bought at the auction oh well, that's nice of him me nice of me because mm. i am obviously the boyfriend what a great boyfriend i am <clears throat> right oh come in please go To that perv Dewey going down for a long time. <laughs> to the perv for getting his comeuppance. Indeed. Thank you. And um, cheers. Not that it matters now that the police have got their man, but did Melissa ever mention a friend she had in rehab, Jimmy? Not as far as I know. Only as a matter of interest, what does the J stand for in L.J. Shepherd? <coughs> yes. Is it James? John? <laughs> Why all these questions? You said Dewey had been charged. Well, uh, um, it's uh, a process. That's, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Look, I like to think of myself as a polite and courteous man, but stop wasting my time and get the hell out of my house. Is this the one you wanted? Oh, um, yeah, sorry, yes, um, let me hold the beautiful thing. Thanks for my lovely present, babe. Oh, you're welcome, honey. Um, does the name Jimmy mean anything to you? He was a friend of Melissa's. No, 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 nothing at all, no. I'm just, uh, surprised you wanted a doll, as when I last saw you, you said my dolls, uh, creeped you out. We need to talk. So 
so um, I. Wait. It's not company. Just talk with this. More like a discombobulating zone than a calm zone. Uh, I'll switch you off. say, um, Melissa was part of a writer's group that I was asked to speak to. I, I met her three times, and that was it. She was like that stranger you sit next to on an airplane and tell all your secrets and then never see again. All your secrets? Melissa said there was just one. Yeah, that, that was it. Well, it wasn't even... To... I told her... Are you sick? Is that what all this stuff with the doctor was about? No, 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 no. The book tour was great. I, I was happy. Maybe too happy. I started to feel like I, I felt scared at how disconnected I was from you. And that made me wonder stupidly if we'd be happier apart. And that was the secret she wanted to tell me at the concert? Yes. Agatha, when the book tour starts again, I need you to come with me. Let's see the world together. Will you do that? James, I... I don't know. I... I need to think about it. Come back to the cottage with me, please. Uh, I can't go back home. I can't go back to the cottage. I don't know what happened that night, but they tried to kill me. Melissa was trying to stop them. Well, I paid eleven hundred pounds. How about we say twelve hundred for cash? Right. Well, nothing's too good for my girl. Love the craftsmanship. Um, what was your relationship like with Melissa's sister, Julia? Oh, it's a. Uh, dreadful, actually, dreadful. Um, perhaps you'd uh, prefer a cheaper doll. Those dolls, they're the same as what you took to the singles night. So what? Right. Right, I'm going to teach you both a lesson we'll never forget. So we carefully attach the doll's head to the doll's body, like so using these little tacks here. Pop that in there and give it a little tap, 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 tap. What? I thought you said you'd love the craftsmanship. Yep. You sell vintage porcelain dolls, not cheap ones. Yes. So why have you got those in the cupboard? No more, Mrs. Nice Guy. Either you start answering or the doll gets it. No, no, please. Oh, my gorgeous girl, please. Look, I'll tell you everything. Just please don't hurt her. Well, you can start by telling us why you've got those cheap plastic dolls. Oh, God. We use them to move the drugs around unseen. So you are a dealer. Hang on, what do you mean, we? Look, I'm just a drunken donkey. It's like the drugs mule. You don't think I'm the brains behind a, an operation as big as this to you? Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. He's been using the cheap dolls to move the drugs, which is why he had one with him at the singles night. So if Dewey's not the ringleader, who is? We wouldn't tell us. I threatened to smash his doll, but he still wouldn't answer. And we're still no closer to finding this Jimmy character. Jimmy, you say? No, I'll check the dolls here, but there was a Jimmy the grave digger who was mate of my dad's after the war. Pretty confident it's not him. No. Well, how about... 
James Walkinshaw, who I arrested last week for leaving an ice cream wrapper on the village green. He's 12. Meanwhile, the normally charming Luke told us to get the hell out of his house. He knows something, but how are we supposed to get close enough to find out? I don't know. Karen, his wife, asked me to hang out with her so I could get close to her and then find out more about him. No, 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 you, you're not going there. You're not putting yourself at that kind of risk. He's far too dangerous. There was a gym I snogged at the county fair in 1969. I mean, if it was him, it'd be a crazy coincidence. Do you want to go for a drink? OK, forget that, then. Sorry. Sorry. Just, I'm a bit fed up. My sick leave's over and I'm going back to work tomorrow. You know, it's been really fun to be free of all the rules and regulations, not to mention Wilkes telling me what to do. Yeah, I sometimes want to follow my own instincts, not just Agatha's. Like my idea of seeing Karen Shepherd. I think that would be a great idea to get more info on Luke. What do you think? Great. Just got a text from my mate saying he's had his results and he's been made sergeant. Well, look, well, look will you all be next? But why haven't I heard? Do you think it's a good idea to go and see Karen? Yeah, it's a great idea. You should definitely do that. Hi, Karen. It's uh, Tony the detective. Um, are you around tomorrow? Hey. Hey. Next time you stop working for the night? No. Nope. It's a case to crack. I know I've put you through a lot. I want to make it up to you. James. You all right? Hey. I know that you're trying to protect me and everyone else, but we're going to get through this together. Right? Where have you been this evening, Sir Charles? Oh, just for a quiet drink at the Fox, Mrs B. Mm, singles night is until next Thursday. Yes, I know. It's not the only reason that I would... I say, isn't that Mayor Tad? Hmm. His daughter can't get enough of those dolls. Mayor Tad hasn't got a daughter. He's got a 14-year-old son who I have observed lording it round town in possession of a nose ring. No. I'll go and investigate this. Put it down in the dozier. Mum, are you sure I haven't had any post? What? Yeah, of course they're clean. No, Mum, post. Oh, OK, thank you. Love you. News. Thank you. Nice to they really get on. Chemistry, I think they call it. Uh, is that the secret to a happy relationship? <laughs> when I manage to have a happy relationship, I'll let you know. <laughs> is chemistry enough on its own, though? Maybe you have to work harder than that. Be prepared to make sacrifices for each other. James? Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. Maybe we could get lunch. I could get you a suspiciously handled smoked salmon sandwich. To celebrate my first day back at work. I can't do that thing, remember? Yeah. You said it was a good idea. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a really great idea. OK. I was coming out of the Fox and Ferret last night. Really? It's not a single night till next Thursday. I know! I was just having a quiet drink. Anyway, I saw Mayor Ted. 
carrying several of Dewey's drug dolls, presumably into the pub. Well, I think that we may have a new suspect. Hello, detective. How lovely to see you. Well, you better come in. Well, come on in. I promise you, I don't bite. Get off to work, you weirdo. And stop freaking my friend out. Yes, sorry, Karen. I'm going now. All right. We'll gather your things, then I'll drop you back. Sheila, I'm going to stay here. Really? I'm not going back in that boot. Are you sure you're all right? I'll be fine. You go. Go. From cleaner to detective. I love your journey. Oh, thanks. I'm just lucky to find something I love doing. Yeah. I had some dark times when I was younger. It just made me value everything Luke and I have done. Building up his business and all that. Of course. To LJ Shepherd, gentlemen's <laughs> outfitters. Mm -hmm. What's the J stand for, by the way? Mm. Jocelyn? Mm. But Luke thinks Jocelyn's Ponzi. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> <laughs> then he is quite Ponzi. Luke, <laughs> Jocelyn, <laughs> Shepherd. <laughs> So if Mayor Ted is the murderer, what's his motive? Julia said that Melissa had gotten back into drugs. If she had found out that he was the ringleader, there's his motive right there. But Mayor Ted was at the concert all evening, which gives him a cast-iron alibi for the night Melissa was killed. Attention, crime fighters. I was reading through my dossier last night, and I discovered some important evidence. Maybe Mayor Ted got somebody else to do his dirty work for him. On the night of Melissa Shepherd's tragic death, I was proceeding through the village of Carsley with my trusty guard dog, Felix. So he had Melissa killed and then tried to frame James? When I saw a pesky teenager loitering in the street, she was wearing pigtails. But surely someone needs to interview the mayor before he realises we've cottoned on to him. What do we do now? I, I can feel you're right. Wait a sec. What were you saying, Mrs. B? I was saying I was taking my trusty guard dog, Felix. No, 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 not the bit about the trusty guard dog, Felix. The bit about the teenager. Well, I'm pretty sure the murderer was a grown-up. I'm sorry, Mrs. Boggle. I think you might be a bit obsessed with antisocial teenagers. But are you actually suggesting that Mrs. Boggle bumped into an adolescent who attacked James and killed Melissa and Julia? No, that is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that maybe Mrs. B thought she saw a teenager. I know a teenager when I see one. You say this person was wearing pigtails, am I right? Well, what if this teenager was Karen Shepherd? She wears pigtails. Who's Karen Shepherd? It couldn't have been Karen. She was at the concert with her husband, with Luke. <laughs> That's her. Bill, arrest her pervert husband for marrying an underage 14-year-old. Maybe she slipped out during the concert. That would work. That would give her enough time to go from Barfield Hall all the way to Carsley, murder Melissa and attack James and still get back in time for the encore. Doesn't make sense. Luke Shepard's van was parked at Barfield the whole evening. <sighs> the motorcycle helmet. Charles, you remember the first time we went to Luke and Karen's house? There was a motorcycle helmet next to the bong. Were there any motorcycles parked outside Barfield the night of the concert? I don't see, Mum. What if 
She put the motorcycle in the back of the van and then unloaded it. Luke Shepard was asleep during the concert. Yeah, I saw him sleeping, but I couldn't see Karen from where I was sitting. Oh, man. Bill, you bloody idiot. Tony's with Karen. I'll tell Wilkes to arrest the man, but we need to get to Karen's house. I mean, I have so much to thank Agatha for. I'm so glad James is alive. Your husband's OK? Yeah. He's back home and he's fine. <laughs> I'm very happy, too. <gasps> Hendrix? Retro? Oh, yeah, babes. I'm a massive fan of Jimmy. Right. Same place next Wednesday, OK, Jack? Stand away Wait. from the doll. I said, step away from the doll. <laughs> Mayor Ted, I'm arresting you for drug dealing and drug smuggling. You do not have to say anything, but anything you... I thought we were partners. I think together we could clean up this town, God damn it! Cuff him. It's a fair cup, as they said on the Sweeney. <laughs> but, um, technically speaking, you smuggled those dolls I gave you to bring to my house. So, um, you better cuff him and all. That's right. Oh, hang on. Oh, you're good. I've checked with the DVLA. There's a motorcycle registered to Karen Shepherd. Luke Shepherd at his shop under surveillance. Karen! It's the police! Open up! Karen! Tony! Tony! to sleep. I wouldn't bother, James Lacey. You can sleep when you're dead. Melissa saved my life. Yeah, she did. Silly bitch. I'm Karen Shepherd, by the way. But, uh, you can call me Jimmy. You're the sociopath friend from rehab. Sociopath? Rude. I met Melissa in rehab and we were together for years. Poor love was obsessed with me. Promised to leave me everything in her will. Of course, she'd try and escape me, but I, uh, Followed her here, got a job working for Luke, seduced him, got him to break up his marriage to Melissa. Even though he still loved her. That's how much he was under my thumb. So then Melissa and her money were mine once again. <laughs> Until you came along. You're a monster. Whatever. Melissa told me about your affair. How you told her to break up with me and leave her estate to you. That was rubbish. That was her fantasy. Sure it was. I wanted you dead. The night of the concert, I saw Melissa leave. Then I slipped away when my boring old husband fell asleep. Followed her here to kill you. Then she stopped me. So I lashed out her with a hammer and then went back to the concert. <laughs> and Julia? Why did he kill her? What has she done to you? I overheard your posh friend Charles talk about Melissa's friend from rehab. Thought she knew about me. The things we do for love, eh?
Sharon Shepherd's raving, lost her mind, or she's pretending she has. It, Mayor Ted is going down for a long time. Oh, on the upside, he'll have time to watch all ten seasons of Columbo. I'm a bit jealous. All oh, those Garibaldi's. I, uh, I have a confession. Go on. I invited myself to stay, not because you had problems in your relationship, but because I'm having problems in mine, and uh, I need to go home and deal with it. Well, I hope you work things out with your husband. Oh, dear. How are you doing? Better. I'm still really sad about Julia, obviously, but... It occurred to me, a nun fell in love with me. I think the old magic is back. <laughs> Bill, there's a letter here for you. Your mum must have forwarded it on. I can't open it. Well, I'll do it. Oh, it's a parking ticket. What? Just kidding. You passed. You're a detective sergeant. <laughs> I'm so sorry I confided in Melissa, not you. Oh, James. I'm sure there have been times when I should have confided in you, too. In fact, I know there are. <laughs> I can't come and book tour with you. Then I'm cancelling. I, I could be away months, even a year. No, James. Absolutely not. You have worked so hard for this to make a success of it. You are going back on that book tour. I insist. Come with me. Please. I can't. This is your adventure. It's, it's not mine. I, I need to be... Well, I want to be here. The agency's doing better than ever, and you know what? I'm happy. You know, when you were away, I began to realize that I could actually be happy on my own. And I need to give that at least a bit of a try. Of course. When Sheila was here, she was avoiding some kind of problem at home. Let's not become that. I don't think we'll ever stop loving each other. But I think we're being pulled in different directions. Goodbye, James Lacey. Goodbye, Agatha Rosen.